Crowded prisons versus treatments for addiction. The state is trying to figure out which is best. But your safety could be hanging in the balance here, and a high-profile case highlights exactly why. Two News investigative reporter Wendy Halloran started digging and discovered multiple missteps from different levels. Well, Heidi and Mark, tonight we are going to take you on an odyssey of failures that enabled a sexually violent predator with a history of opioid addiction to attack. A warning, this story contains graphic information. A mother's worst nightmare, her daughter snatched off the street. Armed with a knife, duct tape, drugs to disable his victim, and a camera to record the sexual assault. You even curious why you're here? Or do you already know? A former co-worker saw it coming. He had made a comment that he would kill me. Um, I went out and bought my first firearm. It wasn't the first time he viciously attacked. We were actually on, apparently, parole at the time that this occurred. There was an opportunity to prevent the unconscionable from happening, but he got a lucky break. I truly believe that I could be rehabilitated because I know it was in my heart. I would definitely say pure evil. That evil could have been stopped earlier. In 2008, Creed Lujan checked into the Crystal Inn. He lured a housekeeper into his room and strangled her. Then he twisted a towel into a weapon to strangle her more. He was convicted of attempted murder and sentenced to three years to life. Six years later, he was granted parole. According to his parole agreement obtained by Two News, he is to obey all laws and notify his parole agent within 48 hours of being arrested or questioned by law enforcement. Go down the window. It's now July 26, 2019, and Creed Lujan is passed out behind the wheel of his car. Despite an attempt to drive off, Highway Patrol did arrest him for DUI, but he's not booked into jail and instead taken to the hospital. Two News investigates uncovered glaring failures. First, the UHP trooper failed to communicate to probation and parole that Lujan had been arrested. Lujan didn't tell his parole agent until two weeks later. It was more than six weeks before APMP told the parole board. Then they sent an email and recommended Lujan not be sent back to prison. Two News investigates uncovered that email just sat in the inbox. It was never printed or put in Lujan's file. To be clear, no members of the board were ever made aware Lujan had been arrested. And I'm shocked and I'm, I'm horrified that the system didn't work correctly. Attorney Chad Woolley's firm prosecuted the case for the city of South Salt Lake. Lujan was offered a deal. Specifically with Lujan, we wanted to get a conviction so that he could be, um, his parole could be revoked and he could get taken off the street. But that didn't happen. On November 27, 2019, Lujan pleaded guilty to impaired driving, no jail time, 12 months probation, and ordered to get treatment. Exactly two months to the day, he set his sights on his next victim. Coming up in 60 seconds, the teenager who became Lujan's victim and issues with a new system in Utah that might have allowed it to happen. Nobody is, can sit back and say they're happy with everything that's happening with JRI. That's a clear message. I'm, I'm not happy either. Prepared. Winter weather coverage on 2 News. Welcome back. Before we went to break, we showed you how Craig Lujan violated the terms of his parole but was not sent back to prison. A new way of dealing with offenders leads to treatment instead of time behind bars. Wendy Halloran joining us again. And Wendy, it sounds like the system might be putting us all at risk. Well, the system focuses on treatment instead of incarceration for some offenders. But as you're about to see, sometimes those decisions can have life-changing consequences for the innocent. January 27, 2020. Creed Lujan is captured on several doorbell cameras driving up and down. That's her right there. Ultimately kidnapping a 15-year-old girl threatening to kill her with a knife. I wish I got a better look at his hands. Drugging her, sexually assaulting her, and later dumping her at a bus stop near a high school. Okay, having these rights in mind, you wish... Lujan's brought in for questioning. Do you want to talk to me? Um... Without a lawyer. To spare the victim and her family from having to testify, Lujan took another plea deal. Sentenced to 20 years to life in prison. This is the victim's mom talking before he learned his fate. My daughter is 15 years old and has to grow up with this for the rest of her life, knowing that this man could possibly get out again. 
there's probably a very strong argument that says that that he should have been revoked on his parole and gone back to prison. Tom Ross is the new executive director of the Commission on Criminal and Juvenile Justice, the agency that came up with the Justice Reinvestment Initiative, or JRI. If you're buying in and believe that their that treatment is as important in this as incarcerating and locking offenders up, then somebody made a calculated risk based on the sentencing guidelines, based on best information that they had available. That either happened or somebody made a mistake at best. Treatment, it's one of the major tenets of JRI. The goal, to reduce the prison population and control costs by sentencing offenders to substance abuse and mental health treatment in lieu of time behind bars. But the system has been widely criticized. Nobody is can sit back and say they're happy with everything that's happening with JRI. That's a clear message. I'm, I'm not happy either. A legislative audit last year and this Project Gateway report both point out huge failures with the system. Among them, the fact that probation and parole agents' caseloads have significantly increased with a more violent, higher-risk perpetrator. Both reports also show recidivism rates have surged. Point blank, is the system working? If you're asking me, should we stop and go back, I would say no. Is this victimizing people? Y you are telling me that if we go back in the other direction, there will potentially be more victims. Is that correct? Well, I believe that more families are going to be distraught and torn up still. That's, that's going to continue. We cannot incarcerate our way out of this. Ross now has the task of improving the system to make sure things like what happened to this 15-year-old do not happen again. I can't say enough to bring back the safety and security that they had before this happened. I know that. Knowing what this child went through, and knowing it was so preventable just disgusted me to the point that I was physically sick over it. So what can be done? We asked adult probation and parole and the Board of Pardons and Parole to talk to us on camera about the Lujan case, but they declined. In a statement, the Board of Pardons and Parole said it takes responsibility for not getting the report about Lujan into the paper file. I know my mom heart is sick listening to this. I know a lot of people have questions. So, Wendy, well, we have the new governor in office right now, Spencer Cox. Do we know where he stands on this issue? We do. Governor Spencer Cox declined our request for comment, saying he was still studying the system. However, he did include $3 million in his proposed budget to hire more adult probation and parole agents.